he would well, stop. Yeah, he, as I said at the unveiling, you know, he would, uh, we would be going to sporting events uh, downtown and for some reason we'd leave really early and we wouldn't say anything about it and then all of a sudden we'd be here. <laughs> he'd just want to walk around. He'd go, he'd go into the Grand Central Market and talk to the produce guys and uh, we'd go on Angel's Flight. Uh, we might go to Alberta Street. Um, and we'd spend an hour or so. He'd buy things, uh, blankets, fruit, you know. Uh, he just liked it here. This is where like his beginning. Yeah. And you see these buildings that are that you see now or that were here in, uh, in the 70s, what was here in the 70s. We walk around, look at them, and go, ah oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Exactly my sentiment. That's me. <laughs> but you know, since then it's changed a lot. There's been a lot of urban renewal. I don't really know what. Oh, really? Yeah. He'd be no. thrilled about yeah. it. Yeah. Right. It's just a different place. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the bunker hill that John Fontaine knew um, very, very much came to an end in the mid 60s when the city uh, finally began its final evictions. They uh, cleared 100. Bunker Hill was 135 acres. Uh, the Community Redevelopment Agency seized it. Uh, largest imminent domain seizure in the history of this country. 9,000 right? largest in this history of this country. Uh, 9,000 people were displaced, and they leveled the hill. And uh, Gordon, your your family owned the castle and the salt box, right. and those are the last two houses on the hill. Right. And there are some very iconic photos of, of Bunker Hill from the late 60s where they're the last two structures in back of Union Bank. Right. But um, by 69, this structure we're standing in front of Angel's Flight, there was nothing left on the hill and the city actually removed Angel's Flight and put it into storage. Uh, what's what's immediately in back of you in front of me, this is Angel's Plaza, is Sean Paul? No, Sean Paul, by the way. Uh, but this, this, this is a, a retirement facility this was put up uh, 84, 85. Uh, this was the last parcel. What happened is, is the CRA seized the land, so the city owned the land. The city owned Bunker Hill, and the CRA was charged with redeveloping it. So a group of urban planners under the lead of a gentleman named Yukio Kararatani went ahead and brokered leases for the Union Bank, for what would become all the skyscrapers here, and eventually this last parcel, where Angel's Flight used to be, uh, was finally brokered, and as they began, as they realized they were going to get to yes on this retirement home being here, which in some ways was a real failure on the city, because the city's original promise when they seized all the land was to immediately put up affordable housing for the people that they displaced, and they never did, and it was very much a concession to finally get senior housing on the hill and they so finally Richard, did. So Angel's Flight was a hundred feet um, a little bit half a block. East. Angel's Flight, yeah, was north. This is north. North of okay. Yeah, so Angel's Flight was half a block north of where we are right now. But when they went into serious negotiations with Angel's Plaza, yes, we're yes we're interested, yes we want to do this. Okay, the lease is for this number of years, it's gonna be this much money. Uh, Yukio said just in passing, and by the way you know, we really want to put the funicular back up and it would run right through the middle of your property, wouldn't that be neat? And they said, no, it wouldn't be. <laughs> uh, no, that wouldn't be neat at all. If you want us to do that, we're going to walk. And so the CRA said, oh, no, 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 no. We, that's fine. We'll figure out another place to put it. So the reason we're standing on a platform 30 feet above this plaza, California Plaza, is that when the city finally got it back together in the late 80s to put this back in, the, the hill had been leveled in the mid-60s when the bulldozers tore everything down. They took 30 feet of topsoil off so they could put in what has got to be the most confusing series of streets in North America, in my opinion. And, and when they put Angel's Flight back, they had to build this platform because it just wouldn't, it just wouldn't fit. And so they, they finally put this here. And that was very late in the game and very sad. Uh, Mocha, can, can we see Mocha? No, Mocha is just... Behind right. this, this this hotel right here, Mocha is just behind it. Mocha is a, is a museum, and Mocha came in in '83, and that was really again the city really 
really got gave them a sweetheart deal, and it was really the beginning of, of, of Mocha as um, public art. That one percent of one percent of the budget for skyscrapers has to go to public art. That Mocha was sort of the, the birth of that. That they had to start putting up big sculptures. Um, Stephen, do you want to say something? Come on, just just you're the biographer. Yeah. Well, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the building almost directly across the street from Mocha, 255 Grand, yeah. is the site of what was then 255 South Bunker Hill uh, and the Alta Vista Hotel, where the young John Fonte lived and wrote in the 19, early 1930s. Um, Gordon, we're here on top of Bunker Hill. Do you want to give people just sort of, we're, we're here, this, this, is, this neighborhood is, is Nothing from what you remember from Nothing. your childhood. Can you tell us? Let, let's pretend we're at the thorn corner of Third and Hill. We're not, but let's pretend we're at the corner of Third and Hill, where the old Angels' flight was. What would we see at the top of here? Well, we would first of all see the Angels' flight. <laughs> over there. The Angels' flight and the Third Street Tunnel. The Angels' flight ran up the side of the Third Street Tunnel up to uh, Olive, which is where this uh, terminal was situated. Um, you cross Olive and you walk up 3rd Street, which was the small um, commercial community that was up there. There were uh, restaurants, shoe repair, cleaners, a uh, small grocery store, and the Angel's Flight Pharmacy was on the corner of 3rd and Grand. Um, you walk up or across Grand and up 3rd Street, which ended on South Bunker Hill Avenue. South Bunker Hill Avenue was between Grand and Post there. It doesn't exist anymore. And that's why if you turn left and walk down to 325, that was where the castle was. Um, that's where, that was our property. Um, it, it, was a, it was a small community up here and uh, it was a very nice place. What was, your, what was your favorite place to go up here? My favorite place to go up here? I think I, oh, you know what, there was a delicatessen, there was a delicatessen on the corner of 3rd and Grand, and in that delicatessen they had a cooler with Pepsi-Cola in bottles, and when we would come up from downtown and ride the English flight and walk back up to South Bunkdale Avenue, I always wanted to stop in there because on a day like this or when it's hotter, that was the best tasting Pepsi-Cola I ever had, was in that delicatessen. A semantic question. Everybody I know, who's probably too young to remember, calls this Angel's Flight. You were here, wrote it on a regular basis, call it the Angel's Flight. Should we all take it out and call it the Angel's Flight? Is that what everybody used to call it? Yeah, I think so. The Angel's wow. Flight. Wow, there you go. Can we wear the like, Angel's Flu? Exactly. I'd have copied it or up there with a stencil. Is there a question? I always oh, consider the Angels Flight to be the greatest thrill ride in downtown Los Angeles. Because those cars were coming straight at one another and the last minute they swerved around each other. And and as it swerved out, it was over the precipice of where Third Street Tunnel was. And you were hanging out in space looking down. What a real thrill. Sit on the back where the open cages. That's my seat. That's where I am. And Grand Center, a little something about Grand Center. So Grand Center was with the, the bread basket. Of yeah, it was, there was a small grocery store up here, but Grand Central was certainly the biggest uh, place where you could buy uh, food and produce and things like that. Uh, people went down there and they carried their shopping bags, or the, the old women had their cart that they pulled behind them. And they took Angel's Flight down there and they went, and Grand Central Market is much as it was then. It really has not changed much. It's pretty much the same now. Um, do they, do they sell uh, uh, a lot of the same food same, same thing. as they did then? Same, it looks the same to me, and, uh, and if the things that are in there look the same as I remember. And then they carry their shopping carts and get on Angel Flight and come back here and walk up the hill. I, I guess um, at this point it's probably a good thing to say there's a film that was uh, restored at UCLA called The Exiles by Kent McKenzie, who was a graduate student in the film department at USC in the late 50s. Uh, the Exiles in and of itself is a fantastic film about uh, Native Americans who were living on the hill right before uh, the CRA tore everything down. Uh, very complicated story how there came to be a colony of Native Americans, but there were. 
uh, in the metadata on the DVD, in the extra section, they've included Mackenzie's uh, other graduate film called Bunker Hill, which is a 20-minute documentary on Old Bunker Hill, and it is fantastic. It's it's just, and if you rent the like if you put it in your Netflix queue. And you, you'll get, it comes with two DVDs, and in the uh, secondary DVD is the Mackenzie documentary, The Ex, uh, Bunker Hill, and that's just um, absolutely fantastic. You'll, you'll see the castle, you'll see people going in and out, you'll see uh, Ollie Hart, who uh, we affectionately call Hart.